As Anakin states, I want more, and I know I shouldn't. We know that absolute power corrupts absolutely, at least in the sinful creature of man. Revenge of the Sith is brilliance of the prequels fully realized. From the sweeping cinematography to the lush digital landscape to incredibly consistent visual effects and a tone unlike any Star Wars film, this is the most emotionally devastating tale in the Star Wars universe today. Order 66 is a moment that defined the prequels and is continuing to be mined for storytelling for good reason. The tragic poetry of the Jedi's demise is rich with thematic undertones. No matter how you slice it, the Jedi were traitors. Treasonous actions and planning all before finding out Palpatine was a Sith Lord. Palpatine's genius manipulation across decades gave him the perfect dilemma for creating the Empire and rightfully branding traitors within their governmental system. Did the Jedi have good intentions? Yes, but they paved the road to Anakin's literal hell with said intentions. I've heard it claimed over the years that Anakin's fall is rushed, and I completely disagree. There's a very strong arc throughout the whole trilogy, and you have to look at it as a trilogy. That's how Star Wars does its storytelling, or at least it used to. And there's plenty here to dissuade Anakin from the light. The Jedi are constantly limiting him, holding him back, frustrating him with politics, keeping him from whom he loves, insulting him by not making him a master, and asking him to commit treason against a friend. Not only that, but his cries for help fall on deaf ears. Anakin also is told by a Sith Lord and a Jedi Master that, for one of his enemies, he's too dangerous to be left alive. Both being against the Jedi Code, so Anakin stopping Mace Windu as Anakin needs him for information to save Padme, and to see Palpatine's guys prove in front of the courts is righteous with some selfish intent, but he also sees Mace Windu's hypocrisy. He unwittingly is complicit in the murder and realizes it's too late. His efforts to have both have been futile, and he must choose. And he chooses attachment. Who wouldn't? The following actions are to thrust himself into the dark side for more power, and the rationale is extreme, but when thought out fully and logically, the Jedi more than likely would have gone to civil war with the Republic. To Anakin, the ends justify the means to not only save the Republic to end the war, but to save the woman he loves. Obi-Wan is riddled with purpose and guilt. The entire film, he does his best to support Anakin, but ultimately makes the mistake of not defying the Jedi Council. His lack of full emotional support for Anakin comes back to haunt him as Anakin tears it all down. Thinking of all that happens in the Clone Wars show only enhances it, or the book. Anakin makes his own choices, but Obi-Wan does indeed fail him, as does the Jedi. The power of Kenobi's words in the third act sting like a hot knife in one's back. Anakin screams his hate while Kenobi professes his brotherly love, poetry. Ironically, Yoda and Kenobi as the last two able Jedi do exactly what Sidious says they will in the attempt assassinations. This does nothing but feed Anakin's rage and prove Darth Sidious Palpatine correct. However, Anakin's wrath, Darth Vader's wrath, overshadows any intentions. Anakin's first motive was to always save the ones he loved, his mother, Padme. But before all of that, he desired power, the power to control his own fate and circumstances since life had been so cruel to him. His motivations to finally snap and go for it are his loved ones. But sadly enough, they are forgotten amongst the corrupt nature that follows power. Thrusting himself into such anger and hatred, killing children and his brothers makes him destroy his own motivation, Padme, his wife the mother of his child, in anger. He's so confused on what he'd done in the moment that he doesn't even realize it. While Sidious may be manipulating him by telling Darth Vader once he's suited up that in his anger he killed her, he's not wrong. Vader is indirectly yet directly responsible for Padme's demise. Her injury caused complications and she loses the will to live in grief because of Anakin's actions, but she pushes through to at least save her children. Anakin's lust for power ultimately conquered any other feelings he had, cementing his plummet to the dark. And the much reviled but beloved moment for me when Vader, usually stoically robotic and menace, emotes with such heartbreak, no, at this realization. Shattering. Couple bullet points. Unipal is a lot of fun, and it's a cool planet. While the duel between Grievous and Kenobi is a bit anticlimactic for me, the chase and fight are fun. Reportedly, I heard Spielberg helped on that. Not everything fits well with the Clone Wars show. There's retcons that cause too many mental gymnastics with dialogue, but for the most part, that can be ignored. John Williams, hot take, produces his best Star Wars soundtrack. Absolutely incredible, enhances every moment with raw power. So many lightsaber fights, but not all are equal. As Palpatine's is obviously shot around stunt doubles with close-ups, and the Jedi are killed too quickly. It could have been executed better. There's so much good there to make up for it, and I can argue in defense of it, 
but I 100% get the criticisms. Obi-Wan versus Anakin, the battle of heroes, is the greatest lightsaber duel and one of the best film showdowns of all time. Not only is it wonderfully scored and spectacularly choreographed, the perfect example of spectacle meets storytelling. There's a lot left to ambiguity in this film with Palpatine, Anakin's feelings, and many other lore elements. The darkness radiates off of every frame and the tone is one of uncertainty after the amazing opening that's reminiscent of a Clone Wars episode, like down to the minute. The mise-en-scene elevates the dread to heights that make it one of the most dazzling trilogy finishers in history and my personal favorite Star Wars film, quite possibly in my top 10 of all time. Revenge of the Sith can be summed up in Lucas' most brilliant piece of dialogue, because he does have some, so this is how Liberty dies, with thunderous applause. But Star Wars is ultimately about light rising to meet the dark, and it ends full circle with Leia and Alderaan and Luke on Tatooine, in front of those vast twin sons, symbolic of the twin children. Indeed, a new hope. I give Revenge of the Sith 5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, if you could, subscribe below and hit the like button, share with your friends. The prequels weren't popular for a long time. I grew up with them. I was the perfect audience after loving the original trilogy as a small child and then kind of being old enough to see these in theaters. Uh, they're special to me and I can defend them on any given day. I'm happy to discuss it and engage with anyone on this topic. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts. What's your favorite Star Wars film? Stay tuned for more content uh, coming, especially with Star Wars. Thanks.